Hello and welcome to the video. This is another video in the Audio Heli series that I'm currently doing. Now, the idea with this is that each of these videos initially is going to cover a subsystem of the helicopter. And when you've got them all set up, it should be ready to go and try and maiden hover. And then potentially if that all works, then the last video I'll do is about tuning these things. Now I need to say a massive thank you to this gentleman here. This is Matt. Matt is one of the developers who flies the helis and has been incredibly useful helping me understand the documentation, what's right, what's wrong and what's missing. Because the documentation as it stands as I'm recording this is still playing catch up a little bit with the code. So it's great having a developer who not only understands the code, but how to explain things to a trained monkey like me, that he is really important to this. So a massive thank you to Matt for the time and effort that he's spending helping me figure out what's right and wrong. Looking through the documentation, it isn't as simple as it should be. This kind of helicopter, this is an OMP Hobby M4. Uh, if you have already seen it, we've already set up the head on this. This time we're gonna set up the tail. This has a very traditional setup in that it has a tail that's controlled by a servo with a rod underneath, and then that controls the pitch. The actual rotation of the tail is via a shaft or a belt that's correct, connected to the main shaft. So if the main blades are turning, the tail is turning, and the servo is just changing the variable pitch. The vast majority of models are going to be set up like that, and if they are, the setup is actually really, really simple, and a lot of this stuff that's in the documentation isn't needed. Now, a couple of warnings and caveats before we get into this. Helicopters are nasty little things if they get out of control. They can really hurt you and do lots of damage to people, pets, and property. Do not attempt this as your first RD pilot build. And if you're not sure about anything, stop and refer to the documentation. This how-to series is designed to set up something like this OMP Hobby M4, which has a very traditional head setup, a very traditional tail setup. It's not designed to be the answer to every kind of head and tail and configuration that's out there, but hopefully by watching this, you'll understand how easy some things are and how complex some others are, but the process that you follow to get to the end. Always be super careful with helicopters. I would recommend if you're going to be plugging in power and the ESC is going to be powered, make sure that both the blades on the main part of the head are off, but also the tail blades are too. Having one of these start up on your bench when you didn't mean to is a life-changing experience and you definitely don't want it to happen to you. So whenever you're plugging the battery in, do make sure that the blades are off. I'm keeping the blades on for this demonstration, but do whenever you take the blades off, do make a note of which way they rotate. This head is going to rotate in a clockwise direction and the tail is going to rotate. If you move the head around, you'll see which way the tail's rotating as well. Make sure that your blades are on the right way. While we're on the subject of prerequisites, let's do a quick slide. First thing you want to do is make sure that the yaw control on the radio and the radio calibration has been done and works. When you push the yaw control to the right hand side, the value of the yaw channel should go to its maximum value in the screen emission planner that shows you all the channel values on the radio. Never ever reverse the rudder channel on your radio to try and fix a problem with the tail not moving in the right direction. It has to be that way around. The correction is done in RD Pilot. Next thing to make sure is that the orientation of the flight controller is correct. If you yaw the model left and right or lift the nose up and down, that the artificial horizon with inside mission planner and also the heading along the top move in the correct corresponding way. If you have your flight controller upside down, backwards, and you haven't corrected that inside mission planner and Ardu pilot, then that is going to result in a house of cards. And although it might look like it's gonna work, it'll be pretty horrific when you try to fly it. Next thing to do is make sure that the servo is free moving and there's no binding, all the link linkages are nice and tight, but not tight enough to cause an issue. Some tail servos, like on the one on here, don't operate from the normal 1000 to 2000 PWM range. Some tail servos, like this M4 OMP Hobby tail servo, only operate from a very narrow band, from 800 to 1000. So I will have to set that up inside Mission Planner. But I would always recommend if you're playing with this stuff, 
treat yourself to something like a servo checker. It makes things an awful lot easier and a lot less um, just kind of guesswork and iterative messing about on the table. Last ones I've mentioned is do make sure you are crystal clear which the way the blades go round. There's no point in setting your tail up if you've installed the blades upside down. That is going to give you a little bit of a headache. But there's a couple of tricks to make sure that you've got the blades moving in the right way. And I'll show you that on the bench. So let's jump to the bench with all that said. And let me show you how to set up the tail. Because believe it or not, it's probably the easiest part of the whole setup. So here we are with the Pixhawk 6C Mini from Holy Bro that I have on this helicopter plugged into the computer. I have the radio bound to the receiver and with the standard setup. So again, the first thing we'll do just before we get too far into this is we're going to check that the rudder or the yaw control is moving the right way. So here in Mission Planner, if I move the rudder to the right hand side, we see the value goes up. If it goes the other way, the value goes round. Down. You have to have it that way around. You never ever reverse controls for Mission Planner and RG Pilot on the radio, whatever you're setting up, but very important if you're doing something in a helicopter. Now, the first thing we need to do is we now need to then just double check with that check done uh, that we have the right stuff set up. If we go into servo outputs, we'll see that servo four is going to be set up as motor four. A motor four is actually where we have plugged in the servo for the tail. And if I move the control left and right for the rudder, you'll see that it goes down to 837 and it goes down to about 972. Now I know the range for this particular servo or for the tail is 800 to 1000 with the middle position. I've just set it in halfway as 900. How did I figure that out? Well, I used a good old servo checker, plugged it in and just figured that out. However, there is a way that you can do that and figure out what the maximum and minimum value should be for this screen here in Mission Planner if you don't have a servo checker. But if you're doing this, I would recommend along with a high quality pitch gauge, get yourself one of these. And we can see here that it's moving in one direction and the other. If we find in a moment that it's going in the wrong direction, the tail is moving in the wrong direction, we'll just click reverse here. So that is all set up, that's really good. Next thing we'll need to do then is we'll go into the configuration and we'll go into the full parameter list. We will search over here for H underscore tail and the tail type is all these different ones. And you can actually see all these different ones. So if you hover over, you can actually now click on it and click which one you have. We want it as servo only because that's what this helicopter has and that's the default, so that's absolutely fine. So let's go back into setup. Let's just get back onto the output screen so we can just see everything as it's moving. I'm going to power the model from a battery uh, because we're going to, I haven't got the ESC plugged in, but I'm going to power everything because that's going to be needed to power the servo so we can see which way everything is moving. Now, are those powered? The servos are not doing anything because I have to press the safety switch on the GPS. Press and hold. There we are. The servos burst into life. And now I can move the tail. And what we are looking for here is we are looking for the trailing edge of the blade because this blade is going to rotate in that direction. So counterclockwise, as I'm looking at it here from the right hand side, apologies for the buzzing that you can hear. I've got, not got the blades on the top completely level, so they're slightly unbalanced, which is why the swash is complaining all the time. If I move the stick to the left, you want the trailing edge to point in the direction that the stick is moving. Hopefully you can see that it's working the right way. So that is perfect. That's what we want. If that was wrong, then what we do is we'd come in here and we'd click on reverse. So that is the tail set up. It's pretty easy and straightforward, right? Well, if you didn't have a servo checker, and why on earth wouldn't you if you're going to be playing with something like this, you can find the minimum and maximum values here. And again, all I did is I just plugged the tail servo directly into this and just figured out what the maximum and minimum were. It could also be listed in the documentation for the helicopter as well. But what you can do is there is a control that you can turn on and off. 
And if we go back into the full parameter tree and we search for something called h underscore sv underscore man, then by default it's set for zero and this is basically meaning that the PID loop for the tail is all working so you won't get the maximum travel in each direction but what you can do is you can turn it to one and then write that parameter and then you can move the stick gently each side and then that make a note of the maximum servo position again apologies for the head screaming I'm just trying set the blade so that it's not touching anything it'll be happy or happier anyway and what you would do then is just move the tail one way and then the other um, just figure out what the maximum position was you could actually see that listed in the output screen make a note of it and then you would set it back to zero for disabled come back here in setup and then just plug those numbers into the minimum and maximum as they appear here. And again, make sure that the actual value is moving in the right direction. That's it. You've set the tail up. It's that easy. However, there are two additional things that it talks about in the documentation that will give you a small increase in the performance, but I would recommend as a first time setup, I would avoid. The first one is that you have the ability to trim the center position. At the moment, I've just got set it for 900. And the way it works, if you're coming to this from like a traditional heli setup, is you normally have a little bit of bias, uh, which would by default in the middle position, giving a little bit of torque to counter the rotation of the main blades. And you do all that kind of jazz. You don't do any of that with Ardu copter on a helicopter. You just leave it as it is. The way it works is when it takes off, the PID controller controlling the yaw and the tail, the I term will wind up to build in that offset. So that's automatic for you. However, what you can do is you can trim that middle tail position. And again, at the moment, we've got that set for 900 here so that that I term doesn't wind up as much. And that's at the moment with the versions of Ardu Copter on the helicopter that I'm playing with here, that is an iterative thing. So you would fly it, you would get it into a hover on a nice, stable, calm day. Once you've done that, you'd land it, you'd look at the log file, you'd look at what the I-term value is for the yaw, and then you'd adjust the, this midpoint value for the tail by maybe 20 at a time. So maybe make it 920 versus 900, fly it again, see whether that's make it better or worse. If it makes it worse, then you go for 880 instead and try it again and iteratively get it down so that the I term is low as possible. Is that necessary? Well, not for your first build. I would argue that you can just avoid all of that. However, if you want maximum amount of performance and stop I term having to work as hard or to rise to that value to offset the tail, you can absolutely do it. In future versions, it's expected that that will become an automatic thing that the helicopter stuff will just take care of and just trim out in the same way that our do plane trims all the control surfaces on a plane. The last one then, there is also the option to play around with the H underscore col to your. That's where you're changing the ratio of the collective to the yaw. So as you increase the collective, it changes the yaw. Again, it gives a very small change in terms of the performance of the tail. That is even more complicated to set up. At the moment, I would completely ignore that. You will still get 90 odd percent of the tail performance if you just do what I've showed you here on the desk. You ignore doing the things like the calibration of the trim value to get the I term low, and you ignore things like the collective to your settings. If you don't do those two things, you're still gonna get a really nicely flying helicopter. So there we have it, that is how you do it. So I had to make sure that the tail type was right. It should be by default for a tail of this type. Uh, made sure that the max and min were the right numbers, again, with this servo on this particular heli, because the tail servo, it has a very narrow range and that has to be set in Mission Planner. And then make sure it's all moving in the right direction. The final test I would recommend you do is with the servos powered, just hold it out and just rock the tail from side to side. Make sure that the blades are also correcting in the right direction to pull the tail back from any uncommanded yaw movement. 
that's the last check. If you've just done it the way that I showed you, which is you make sure that the radio is moving in the right direction and you reverse the direction of the tail via the motor four settings, then you know what? You should be absolutely fine. But it always pays to triple, even quadruple check that that is right. Having the tail reversed and working in the wrong direction will mean as soon as the skids leave the ground, the tail will start whipping around and it will go faster and faster and faster. And that will make a very, very bad day. So I would always triple check this, follow the, along with the guide that I've just showed you. And hopefully we are ready for the next video in the series. Next thing I plan on tackling is going to be setting up the speed controller and talking about how you would use something like the governor in this. And then that's the head, the tail and the ESC and motor setup. We will be getting very close to taking it for a fly. So again, link to the entire series down below. Massive thank you to Matt for his help putting this series together. And I will see you hopefully in another video where we'll continue to put this thing together. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.